Hello and welcome to The Extra Mile. I'm Linda Boudreau. Our guests today are Patricia LaBosse and Jackie Bear. Both are with the Louisiana State Nurses Association, District 4. Did I get that right? Mm -hmm. uh, and there, we're really going to be talking about nursing today, about the profession of nursing, uh, some changes perhaps that are coming down the pike, and some celebrations for nurses because, let's face it, nurses are... Maybe I could say the backbone of our healthcare industry, but it's certainly a critical part of it. So welcome both of you. Thank you for having us. Now, Jackie, you're the vice president of your organization, and Patricia, you're the, the president, That's right? Correct. So tell us a little bit about what the Louisiana State Nurses Association District 4 is all about. Okay. Well, we're um, an organization that covers seven parishes, um, and we support nursing in ways through just networking, uh, education. We have meetings every other month where we offer some education um, ideas uh, for the nurses who attend. Uh, we do have a celebration coming up. Uh, we're trying to get involved in more community activities. Um, so it's just a good network of nurses meeting and trying to learn more too that what goes on in legislation that maybe we don't always hear about. Right. So we right. have some good uh, key people uh, in our group that can help us with some of those things. Okay. Patricia, you, you, you're the president, so what is it, or what, what brought you into this? I mean, oh my goodness, I've been with this for uh, almost 30 years, and um, have lived in several different states, and every place I've lived, I've always been part of the, the professional association, and the, um, for our district is part of the, the overall state association, and then the state association is a constituent member of the American Nurses okay, Association. Okay, so it really goes all the, from top yeah, to bottom. So right, to and I've just always held a belief that we give back to our communities in whatever ways that we, we want to. And working with the professional association, um, every time we recruit a new member, we're recruiting an additional opportunity to grow our voice. To, right. to be able to be heard because we know the more of us that there are, the more people can listen. So we look at, um, like Jackie said, we look at local things and as part of the state and national organization, we get involved in initiatives for prevention, for wellness, and certainly legislative activities. There was something that came across this past weekend looking for help. There was a possible threat to Title IV funding, which has in it nursing education, stipends for nurses to go to school, and I think maybe even some specific money for people in nurse educator programs. So we got busy writing letters asking our legislators to not let that be one of the parts of Title IV that was perhaps in danger. Okay, so but you, do, you do some advocacy work, you do yes. some education, and I think, I think especially for nurses, or for people in those helping professions, a lot of it, I think, we, we're so busy giving, giving, giving. Do you get a lot out of it, too? I mean, does it kind of help feed your, <laughs> feed your professional soul, so to speak? I think it does, because I think most of us, hopefully, went in it to be, because we care. Yeah. So whether we care about giving to someone or the little bit we do get back, mm -hmm. it's still just part of what we do. And um, so I, I just think that's, that's just kind of ingrained in us to care and um, yeah, to be recognized is nice, but I don't think we, any of us do it for recognition. We do it for the joy we get out of, of taking care of uh, our sick. And I'm thinking being with each other. I'm, I'm thinking the, com the, the, the companionship, the camaraderie has got to be wonderful. Well, one of the rewards that's been for me, gosh, for a long time, because I'm an old nurse, um, is as I've been successful in engaging one of the younger ones to come into the profession. When I am able to talk with someone and get them, get the younger ones involved, or not even just the younger ones, but people who have not been part of the association, get them engaged in, in joining and, and becoming a part of what we do. I taught at the university for seven and a half years and I always loved working with the students. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's wonderful now when I see them, well, just yesterday at a meeting in Baton Rouge, there was a young lady that I had taught. It was my second semester, and she's living uh, right outside of Baton Rouge, and she was there because of some of the things that she learned back when she was here. So, yeah. so getting people yeah. engaged, that's, that's a huge reward for me. 
Yeah, I think it would be a kind of very exciting. And speaking of, of all that engagement, um, you know, we hear from time to time we have a nursing shortage. We, uh, I don't know if we do right now or not, but in terms of just as a profession, as a career, what are the opportunities? What's the potential for, say, someone watching today who may be saying, oh, what do I want to do when I finish high school? What do I want to do when I grow up? What do I want to major in? What, why nursing, would you think? Well, one thing nursing does offer, like I said, you, you have to have the, the caring in you and wanting to do it, but it offers so many different um, avenues to go into. You know, of course, there's hospital nursing, there's home nursing, there's um, teaching in an academic setting. You know, there's so many different ways we can go, different shifts you can work that, you know, work for you and your families if that's what matters. Um, but there's a lot of opportunity, so it's, it's all, and it's always changing, so... I'm not saying if you not if you're somewhere that you don't like you move on, but, but if, you can. if you really can't feel like this is your your mm -hmm. place to be, there are other places that you can go and try. And everybody finds their niche; they find what really um, works for them, what makes them happy, and what they're comfortable doing. So there's a lot of flexibility in it. There is some. I think when it you know comes to scheduling, you know, if there would be a perfect job, I think we'd all be doing it. But <laughs> you do have those opportunities to work different, you know, have flex schedules in some ways. You know, um, Monday through Friday is not always the best thing, but sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. And of course, if you work in the acute care hospital, it's 24-7, so you do have different shifts to work. But once again, you can usually find something that works for you in your time of your life, your family's life. So that's kind of a nice thing, mm -hmm. a nice feature of, you know, one of the things that we do, okay. having to do it. But it, we can also make it work for ourselves. Because okay. you need to. It's got to work you for you. You need to. If you need yeah. to, to be there and to work, then you can find a, a, a time that might work best for you. And I think your interest, you can find something that fits your interest. If you like exactly. little kids, if you like geriatrics, exactly. if you like mental health, if you like working with adults or prevention, there's exactly. a place for everyone, huh? Sure. Well, and the beauty, Linda, is that it, that can change. The, the young ones come out of school and they start doing whatever, and then in a few years they, they get an interest over here. Well, then they can change without having to go back and get another degree mm -hmm. or things like that. And one of the big, huge things that's coming along now, or is here now in the, in the, in the industry, is nursing informatics. Now, what is that? Hmm. <laughs> that that's using nursing skills and nursing judgment to help build those uh, electronic medical records. That, that's a, this is a diluted, watered-down kind of thing. It's just... The use of nursing knowledge in getting information, healthcare information, building programs. Um, Jackie, help me out. What other informatics? Setting databases. Yeah, all the things that go into the electronic uh, medical record, which we're all going to. Right. So that right. things can interface and talk, and you can find out information from your physician's office to the hospital to, you know, so it's not mailing things, faxing things, and all being right. computerized. So it's all got to be built specific for what. A nurse needs to do what a physician needs to do, what a nursing assistant needs to do. So it, it takes a lot, but it takes that medical knowledge to be able to, to build all these programs that go into so all this those. Is yeah, so an that's emerging big, field. Yes, oh, it really. is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we're also going more and more toward um, our education being computerized, where we're not in classroom settings. You know, oh, really? you can do so much more. Uh, online courses through universities, hospitals are going, you know, it's a cost savings, plus you can do it on your own time. So it's not like you have to come on a special day at a certain time, it's up to you to do it. So all those things are, you know, coming along and it takes nursing because we have that background to help build all these things and make them work. So it's kind of an exciting time. I think it is. It's uh, you know, very different from what I grew up doing, you know, uh, because I've been a nurse longer than Patricia, <laughs> but she started later, so I've been a nurse 37 years, and um, it's very, very different than it was. But um, if you stay focused and if you stay in tune to groups, she, as I said earlier, was the person who got me involved in the Nurses Association because I didn't do it when I was earlier in my career because it's like, well, why am I doing this? But Right. I guess the more mature you get, then it's like, well, no, this is a good thing, and it's a good network um, organization as well, but you learn so much, and when you have mentors that, you know, give you that opportunity, it really does make a difference in your career. It does. And it, it helps you grow. It makes a difference in you, I think. Oh, yeah, you know, for sure. Well, and one of the things we're so proud of is this is the 15th year 
for our Acadiana Celebrates Nursing event. Well, congratulations. Well, thank you. What are you going to be doing this year? Well, basically some of the same thing. We, we grow and, and we, we get better and better every year, but National Nurses Week is May 6th through the 12th. Okay. And that's by design because Florence Nightingale's birthday falls in there. Um, think the 8th, but I won't swear to it. Okay, somewhere in that. Yes. Uh, and what we, what we have is we have seven parishes in our district, and so we send out nomination forms to everybody that we can get our hands on, and they nominate nurses for the Cadiana Celebrates Nursing event. And this year we had 74 um, nomination mm -hmm. forms come back, and what we do, Linda, is we blind them so that the judges don't know who they're, who they're looking at. And then the judges, they have a scoring guide. The judges uh, score, and we have the, the ranks. And we pick 25. Wow. It's always 25 so that we can keep it small enough to give people the honor that they right. deserve. Exactly. And this year they're coming from public health, they're coming from mental health, they're coming from the hospitals. One local physician nominated the nurse in her office because that nurse picked up on the signs and symptoms of the fact that she was acutely ill and got her to the emergency room. Got the doctor to the emergency room? Got the doctor to the emergency room, mm -hmm. called ahead and got CTs. Cause oh, it's, it's an incredible story. You'll have to come and I'm hear the story. You're going to have to come, yeah. have to come and hear the story. Already. But we have uh, one year we had an 80-year-old assistant director of nursing of a nursing home. She's still practicing mm -hmm. her nursing. I mean, we have some mm -hmm. wonderful stories. Mm -hmm. They come from all over. And you can be nominated by a fellow nurse, um, a family member, patients. Anybody who can um, come in contact with a nomination form is open to, to nominate. So we've had a variety of um, nominators for the nominees that we have. So it's quite interesting, as you said, to you know to know some of the stories. And there's awesome stories out there. It's just somebody taking the time to recognize someone who probably deserves it. Yeah, what a great thank you. I guess it's too late to nominate this year. Right. It is, so let's yeah. just kind of jump ahead to next year because you will be doing it six years. You betcha. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So people that, that maybe be on the lookout this year or think about it, but how do they get a nomination form? How could, like if we want to nominate next year, how do we do that? Okay, we're a work in progress. Okay. We're excited that this year we got the nomination <laughs> forms up on our website. Yes, we have a website. Time. We're excited about yeah. that. That's and a big and deal. we're, we're mm -hmm. developing our website and working toward having more um, uh, forms and things available on the website. Okay. But we do have our district website is www. D I S T R I C T I V District Four mm -hmm. Nurses Nurses dot com. Okay, and you can go there and find out. We still have to update it and find out more about us. But um, Jill Aracini did was wonderful this year. She got us on the radio, getting us on TV. We're going to do that earlier next year to have more opportunity. We've had we had four people call and say, "Oh, I heard about this on the radio. Yeah. How do I get a form?" Yeah. So and then. so that um, that's an op you know that's that's opportunity. But we we get them out to the hospitals, we get them out to the doctors' offices, we get them out to um, health centers, mm -hmm. any place School that nurses, we can think of. Yeah, yes, anywhere because nurses work in a variety of places, and that's where we're trying to reach. And I think of patients, especially. You know, I mean, patients trust nurses. You know, mm -hmm. nurses are like the the people we develop. I think the the most intimate relationship with mm -hmm. in our medical care. I mean, we we look up to our doctors and we, we take their advice, but we really, I think, turn to our nurses for that kind of support and and all the stuff that that has to happen to make us comfortable. And I know that many many people are going to want to thank their nurses mm -hmm. if they just have a way to do it. Yeah. Well, we're hoping next year we'll. Be and this year too. I mean, you got yeah. you got seventy some nominees. Yeah, that's, that's nothing that's to fabulous. You know, that's not, that really is fabulous. Yeah. How many nurses around do you know that do we have in Acadiana? Roughly, probably about six thousand. Ooh, and so those are no, those mm -hmm. are numbers from. 2012, the Board of Nursing has their 13 report prepared, but it has to go before their board for final approval. So I don't know how those numbers will change. In the state as a whole, we have about 60,000. So I guess you a tenth of the nurses live in this area, mm -hmm. in our seven parish area. So we're doing something right here, I think, you know, as far as nursing goes. I, I think so. We have some excellent educational programs yeah. and all kinds of opportunities. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So what's going to happen the week 
of nur uh, for Nurses Week? What we're going to have a banquet? Well, our banquet is going to be May third. So okay. Be the Saturday before actual Nurses Week starts. And that's when you honor your twenty-five. Our twenty-five. Yes. Okay. So we have a banquet in at the Petroleum Club. We have a slide presentation, which we recognize each honoree. We have um, certificates and varying gifts to give them for their families to come. We have an opportunity to take pictures, and uh, it's just a good, a good feeling. And lots of nurses come who were nominated in the past or honored in the past or know the, the honorees for the year. Um, so it's really turned out to be a very, very nice banquet. Uh, we try to get speakers who come to be a little bit motivating about nursing, to make you feel good about what you do every day. So it's really a good, a good, a good time to be together. So we'll be on the on the third, and then the week of Nurses Week. Um, I think hospitals do, you know, some of their um, individual ways of how they honor their nurses. Sometimes uh, I know some of the hospitals put things in the paper. They have certain days designated for you know to honor our nurses that day. Um, there's gifts and things that can be given out for nurses. Um, but it's kind of an individual mm -hmm. way. I think A&A gives some suggestions. Yeah. And there's a you know, place you can buy be our National Nurses American Association. Nurses Association. Right. So um, maybe things you would want to purchase through them or just ideas of what to do for Nurses Week. Okay. But primarily, I guess, when you get right down to it, it's really about taking time out to say yes. thank you, mm -hmm. to honor nurses, and, and to really, again, show our respect for the profession. Is that kind of what this is all about? Well, yeah, I think so, and so, to show our appreciation. Um, when you were talking earlier about the nurse-patient relationship, uh, except for the year of 9-11, uh, the 10 or 11 years after that and a few years before that, nurses uh, Gallup poll nationwide are the most trusted profession. So we, we, we appreciate that. that. We appreciate that. that and we try, to, we try to honor that trust that the public has given us. And we, but um, you have earned, by the way, let me just say. <laughs> thank <laughs> you. You're not getting it for nothing. You're earning it. <laughs> right, right. And so uh, saying thank you to these folks, 25 of them, and then we'll have 25 next year, and we're just going to keep doing it. We're I excited. think it's very exciting. And is it open to the public? I mean, could if somebody just want to go? Can they buy a ticket? They can. They can. And I'll be happy to, to uh, let folks know uh, how to do that. If they want to uh, give me a call, I'll be glad for... Um, Okay. To, to do that. Okay. I'd be glad okay. for them to be Because they to may. Do you know, people may actually want to come and participate and just kind of celebrate what nurses do. You know, things are changing in, our, in, the, in the medical profession, as we all know, or how we deliver health care in this country is changing drastically and radically. How, how do you think, as you gaze into your crystal ball, how do you think that's going to affect the, the, the profession of nursing? Go ahead. Well, wow, the opportunities are going to continue to grow. As Jackie was speaking earlier about the, the current flexibility in the industry, uh, health care is changing, trying to meet the demands of a continually changing industry. The patients are in the hospital sicker for a shorter period of time. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to have to position ourselves to be able to take care of that acuity there, but then as they're discharged, the exquisite discharge plan I love that, phrase. that love needs them, to take it. place and yes. then moving them along the continuum from illness to wellness is always the job of, of the nurses. And there are going to be more opportunities for advanced practice nurses, access to care. We, we've got the movement now to increase those folks with um, the different insurance propositions. And so there's going to be more folks who need care everywhere there are going to be more children so there's going to be opportunities at the at the community level at the institutional level at the um clinic level there's just all kinds of things that are going to be happening and basically i think one of the big things is for the advanced practice nurse and tell us about that an advanced practice nurse is who an advanced practice nurse in louisiana we have four categories the um nurse practitioner the certified nurse midwife, the certified uh, registered nurse anesthetist, and then the clinical nurse specialist. And Which Jackie both of you I, are. Yes, yeah, Jackie and I are, are clinical nurse specialists. Those are the roles, and then within those roles, you have the specialties. Okay. And a lot of the nurse practitioners are out in clinics, rural clinics, um, inner city clinics, 
there, oh, well, I work at UHC and we have clinics associated with the hospital and we have advanced practice nurses in each one of those. And what that's doing for the general public, for, for patients, is it's, it's really increasing our access to yes. care, isn't it? Mm -hmm. and, and that's really what this is all about, so that people can get the medical attention that they need. So we're turning more and more to our nurses for, for the direct care as well as for the prevention? Yes, mm -hmm. but always in, always in collaboration with our medical colleagues. Okay. We, we always want to keep to the forefront. So it's a partnership? That we have, that absolutely, that we are, we are partnering with the physicians um, because certainly they're the ones who, have, who do the admissions and discharges and they have a broader scope of knowledge and they have what they do, we have what we do, but we, wanna, we want to have that partnership. That was a good word that you used, partnership, mm -hmm. yes. Because we don't really have enough doctors to go around. I mean, my understanding is that we have doctor shortages, so if we can, if we can increase the skill level of, of other per healthcare professionals and increase, increase access to care, then we all, we all do better. Is that the thinking kind of driving this? You know what? The patients are the winners. I'm, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sitting here as a, as a potential patient thinking I <laughs> the, win. The patients <laughs> are the That's exactly what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. But we all win. You know, I, I like the phrase, a, a rising tide floats all boats. You know, as we, as we enhance the professions, Everybody, get, everybody does better. Mm -hmm. what, what is the role of prevention in all of this? Well, once again, it's, it's access to being able to obtain that preventive um, health care, um, which could be in clinics or whatever, but the opportunity to, to get all the preventive uh, measures taken that we need to do to hopefully keep people on more the wellness end instead of the illness end. Um, and what is the role of nurses in that? In well, that it, could be, it could vary uh, in, to where you work. Probably more in the outpatient type setting is more okay. where you would, I think, see that doctor's offices, clinics, those kind of things. Um, and then just encouraging it when they are on the illness side that, you know, remember, you still need to get back to the preventative measures that you still need to do to, you know, go through this illness and to get better. And I think so much of that's tied into one of the core roles of any nurse, whether you're at the bedside or you have a doctoral, you know, a doctorally prepared nurse or whatever, is patient education. Mm -hmm. That's and how we determine our patient needs with them and then help develop a plan because we can sit and tell you all day long, Linda Boudreau, what you need to do. And if I don't agree with you, if I ain't you don't doing agree, it. if you don't buy in, <laughs> then I'm just talking. That's right. And so having that level of engagement and it, and but it's not just a one time thing. And that's it's where, again, with, the, with the, the access that Jackie was talking about is if we can get people in earlier and snag them and, and have, you know, build that relationship to where they are partners in their health care. Okay, and then hopefully we can have a healthier population, or at least healthy longer, so that we don't have to be very, very sick when we go into the hospital and stay not very long and then have to get well at home. Mm -hmm. In the last couple of minutes that we have, I want to kind of talk once again, kind of bring it back to uh, Nurses Week and, and some, of, some of the activities that, that you have going on. So the banquet will be again May, May 3rd, 3rd. Mm -hmm. and then uh, the rest of the activities will primarily be at hospitals and doctor's offices and that kind of thing. Yes. So we as a community need to be aware and look for the posters and the signs sure. and, mm -hmm. and say thank you to the nurse at your doctor's office and let them know how much you appreciate what they do. And like in... Just to kind of sum up again, is for someone thinking about nursing as a profession, what should they do? Well, maybe, you know, talk to someone who is in the profession. Um, I know high schools um, have universities, they have career days where they have um, nurses, university people who go out and talk to them about the profession of nursing. Um, some places offer um, health-related courses at their at, at school, right. high school, right. um, to be engaged and to understand what it's about, because it's very different to walk into a hospital and to work in a hospital or in, in healthcare. Um, there's lots of volunteering that can go on, so maybe uh, opportunities like that to just be exposed to um, the medical profession or the medical areas that we have, and there's all sorts of areas. But you know, so somebody in high school thinking about it. I think those would be some of the ways you could be attracted to it. But you still have to have that caring. So that's right. a big part of, of wanting to do or wanting to be a nurse is having that caring part of you. 
So to keep that in mind, but it's a great profession to grow in in different ways. Like you know, we have so many opportunities in how we want to work out our, our careers, but uh, great opportunities available. One excellent resource, www.nursingworld.org. That's the American Nurses Association website. And the, what do nurses do? What does it mean to be a nurse? So you think you want to be a nurse. So people can just go point click and get all kinds of information about the profession. Good. So they need to follow it up. Y'all, we're yes. out of time. But I want to thank you both for, for being here today. Patricia and Jackie, thank you, well, thank thank you for you, being Linda. here. And thank you for what you do. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching the next one.